Hi, Astrid. Back again, part number two of our podcast and your truly phenomenal story. Part number one, whoever missed it, just uh, look it up on our YouTube channel, Guts Global Leadership, and watch the reason why Astrid truly transformed and reinvented her leadership. So there you find the pillars, the reasons why someone really is changing. Now, part number two. All that change was preparation for another uh, task, for another challenge, for another adventure. Now, about three years ago, Astrid bought uh, a company called Berenson, Berenson Group. That is a, a group that is based, was based around selling promotional items. And it was family owned for about 180 years. And it had a strong culture about uh, us about the family and about believing in that family that they would guide the ship. And that was great. But the ship had a, a number of holes, <laughs> let's call it this way, and needed fixing, needed somehow we even think about the course for the next maybe 180 years. So in, in that respect, we want to talk about uh, what did happen? Why did it happen? And most specifically, Astrid, and that is the, the first question is like, I can imagine that the thousand people, the sound staff that you actually had, everybody knew somebody's new is coming in. Uh, and obviously, uh, there was a need for change. And you reported that people had some sort of concern, some even maybe a little bit of fear. What will happen? How did we have to change? So how did you address that element? Thanks for having me again, Stefan, to say first. So um, this element of fear or of respect, I think was deep in, in the people's uh, heart and in the people's head, because I think main problem was that um, everyone knew, well, the company has to change and the business model has to change, but there was no clear way designed how to do this. And uh, I think, I mean, it's the same in the personal life. So you are afraid if you don't know how to get out anywhere. So um, I think, or when I came, the first uh, thing was not that I thought, okay, we're not profitable. So uh, we have to fire 30% of staff. So the first idea was that we have this asset, we have the access to hundred thousands of small, medium companies. So how can we make a success story again out of it? And uh, the objective was to define a strategy how we can use these assets together with a team of Berenson and to find out a way everyone can share to sit in one boat. And uh, what I did when I came was uh, in the first 100 days, so every CEO I think wonders, so what do I have to do in the first 100 days? <laughs> And I, I talked almost to everyone here in Hamburg and also in, um, to many people in Brusovitz where our production site is. And I asked everyone in one-to-one -one interviews, so what can be the growth path of Berenson? So what is your idea? And if you could change things, what would you personally do? And what can you be your contribution to change Berenson? And so I didn't come into the company saying, um, so I know how it's like, and I know exactly the way, and I know how we do it. <laughs> and first, we have to get rid of many people, but we um, we approach this together. So it was not I'm coming and I'm against right. you, but it was more. So we are in a process and we um, which was very important after these 100 days and after all these interviews, we defined a mission together. So what is what we really want to do in the future and why, and a clear objective as a vision where we want to go. And also we discussed a lot about what are the values we want to share? Because I think transformation doesn't only mean we change the business model into something which is sustainable, but we also have to change like the, the company in the heart and the culture as a definition, culture is what everyone does in every second. So it's it's a huge thing. So we define values and we said we draw this image together in a team. So how would Berenson be like in the future to be a wonderful place where everyone wants to work? And what do we want to have um, as uh, as like a company image? 
we uh, want to be a part of and we identify with. And uh, I think this process, I mean, it took some time and I'm sure that some people said, so she's talking a lot and she's listening a lot and she talks to client, what is she doing? Because everyone knew we need a solution, how to change. But I think this process was right. And uh, so mission, vision, our values are the basement of our clear strategy we have now. And I think um, this is a big wave. First, it was a small wave. So some people believed in this. And then the wave got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think now Sorry. after three years, so we're in the middle of the transformation. And so I think the majority of our employees says, I understand the strategy. I like the strategy. And I want to be part of building Berenson to the company I want. I would like to have. Beautiful. Let's add, let's. Let's pick out the main issues and address them like a takeaway, uh, because that's a beautiful uh, and a very powerful story. And I guess all or most of our audiences have been involved or will be involved in some sort of transformational projects, particularly at these times of the pandemic, uh, because let's face it, the business models need to be reviewed, the cultures need to be reviewed. So what I heard was, your starting point was a more receptive point. So instead of going in saying, okay, uh, I have an idea how this needs to change. You kind of went into the place and first gave some safety, some security to the, the staff saying, everyone will be in that boat. We will together make this journey. No one left behind, no man left behind, no woman left behind. We will make this journey together. Now that is a very strong, uh, not just a metaphor, but that is a, that's a leadership attitude, right? Now, could you explain I... more in detail how people re responded to that? Uh, because you, you know, you told us that previously they all kind of looked up to the family and say, you will sort the problem. Now, how did they react and how did you cope with that, the human way? Hmm. So I think in, to start with, it was good for people that I didn't say, you have to change, otherwise you're out. Yes. I think this was sort of... <laughs> <laughs> like releasing that um, I said, we all go this way together. And uh, so I have to say that also myself, I, I, I wasn't afraid, but I had a lot of respect. And uh, I, think, uh, I think what made me credible was also that people understood that I have respect also. And this respect um, keeps me open, transparent. Um, and uh, I think this helped people to uh, deal with their own fears. Because mm -hmm. uh, I think I lead the strategy from the beginning pretty strongly, but I also said, well, we don't know, this is the way we want to go. And we try every day to do the best to get the strategy done and to be successful. But if something doesn't work, I mean, then it doesn't work. We have to change uh, the strategy, not the complete strategy, but we have uh, to change some ways. And I think, this helped uh, people to relax a little bit because I think if you have fear as a dominant um, feeling, so it's hard to transform yourself. And uh, so as uh, we said, we go this way together. And I, from the beginning, you know, I was in the middle of the transformation. I didn't say, so I'm in the steering committee. So you all transform. I define the business model. I really went pretty much uh, into detail. And uh, so I, for instance, I, pretty quickly decided to lead the sales department myself, which was not um, in the history of Berenson that the CEO leads the sales department themselves. But I thought if I don't go in the, in the depth of the sales structure, so it's hard for me really to understand what, what is needed and uh, what, is, um, what is exactly the status of the salespeople, because this is our asset. I mean, you have to imagine there are hundreds of salespeople and they have a big Berenson heart and this is a treasure and they really want to go for the company. And I really had to understand myself, how shall we um, act? How have to we, do we have to 
transform our strategy um, into the sales department in order to be successful. And I only, I can say only so you sold promotional products so far. Now you have to sell digital products because this was part of our strategy to say, so we go from the visibility on products to the visibility digitally. So we sell websites, we sell local listings, we sell ZEA, et cetera. So you can't only press a button and say, so now you have to change everything what you did in the past 20 years. So we really had to talk, we had to understand what the, what the fears are, we had to um, convince that this is a win-win situation for the client as well, to not only to get sold like, for, uh, like pens or gifts, but also websites and local listing, et cetera. So um, this I was a long way, but I had to go into detail for this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I just put myself in the position of someone in the sales department, when a, a new owner is coming, a new CEO is coming <laughs> and he takes over the sales department, I'll be having tremendous amounts of respect say, wow, now I have a flash of a thousand <laughs> watt. <laughs> so how did you help them, uh, you know, feel safe? How did you help them get the idea it's not about you know your idea. It's about them. It's about togetherness. It's about we make it. So I think it's clear that uh, such a huge transformation cannot be done from the outside. So wrong thing would have been to say we get a consultant firm and they transform everyone and the business <laughs> model and then it's done. Yeah. So clear was that it has to come from within and from inside and. Uh, so what we did, for instance, is uh, that some salespeople, they are very, um, very talented in some things. So for instance, there's, uh, there are talents for digital projects. So we didn't say everyone has to sell digital products. We, say, we said, so this person, for instance, he is really talented and he understands exactly how to sell it. So he's a kind of local hero and we made um, like, him as a hero for a group of five to 10 other salespeople. And this was not push, you have to change the way you sell, but it was, I inspire you. And this was not done by our training department, which would have been the normal way to teach people. This was done from within. So salespeople trained other salespeople and they motivated each other. So like to be, um, to be uh, in one direction dealing with some issues of our sales, uh, sales organization is much better as only to follow your structure. Yeah. Following your structure would say, so my boss says I have to, so I do. And I can't do it, so the training department is coming and training and trains me. So this was the old way, and this is the way in many, many sales structures. And we try to change from the inside and to motivate people. And this is huge the success is really big because um it's uh, it's not a push strategy you have to but it's a pull strategy so he's successful with digital products and i'm not so i want to learn from him and uh, as a result 80 percent of our salespeople now sell these digital products in the beginning awesome. we thought this will be so tough and everyone from the outside said no this won't work because people I mean, they, they sell um, promotional products, nothing else since 20 years. And we have many people being with us since 20 years, you know, and finally this works. We're still in the middle of a transformation, but I know now it works and people are really enthusiastic about it and really know now this is the way we go. And I feel myself that I talk in a different way to the clients. I feel myself that my world is bigger now, and that's why I know the company was successful, and so the fear is gone. And I, I'm pretty sure that people now at Berenson, they're not afraid anymore. They know it's hard, and I mean, there will be hurdles. I mean, there are hurdles every, every day, yeah, yeah. but we know where we go, and we know we, we will make it because we feel it, that yeah, yeah. we will be that's successful. That's right. Now, actually, I stand you applied the same strategy in two different areas. You said you, you shifted the business model from selling promotional items, which is product selling, you push into the market. You shifted that to uh, putting the small and medium-sized customers in the center and their visibility on their market. 
Now, I believe you did the same inside because you made your salespeople be visible <laughs> and them into you know, the center into the middle of that. Uh, it's their support, it's their, uh, you know, their approach. Now, I guess uh, some of them would have taken it easily, some maybe more difficult. How did you cope with the, the ones, and I'm not saying it's a personal issue, but how did you ad address when when there was a hurdle, when there was a barrier, how did you walk around this? Hmm. So um, I think our vision is so key. Um, and sometimes I, I felt a little bit like a prayer because I traveled a lot and in every regional sales organization, I repeated again and again and again our vision. And I think this is really important also in my daily life. I mean, sometimes I have, uh, I have days where I have thousands of hurdles. And I think for myself, if I wouldn't see every time the vision, because when you enter our office, there's our vision. And if you enter the regional sales um, departments, there's always our vision. And I repeat it and I repeat it and I repeat it because then I think it's easier also for myself to get over these day-to-day -day hurdles. Because I think it's always, you know, like the attitude, how you look on things and it's your decision. You know, you can, if something goes wrong, you can say, um, okay, again, it goes wrong, so we won't be able to manage it. Or you can say, okay, so there's a vision, it's clear we're going to make it. And oh, have a look, there's a little hurdle on it, you know. And um, mm -hmm. so I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's mainly the way you look at it. And the vision helps to, to give the, the big um, direction. Right. Now, to finish up, what were the values that you put into place and how do they reflect also the new culture and, and the practices? Um, so myself and also my, um, my vision of how I would like to lead Berenson is to, to trust. So um, this is my, my major, I think, um, link how I deal with people that I always start with trust. And this is something um, really important. When I came to Berenson, there was not, I felt not a lot of trust also to each other. So people blamed each other a little bit because I guess they were afraid if I don't do self-marketing and I, I blame someone, perhaps it's negative for me. And I think if you uh, create a matter like an organization of trust, and you know that we all go in this direction and everyone is giving the best, I think then, um, you know, you, you can create a culture of uh, like accepting failure. You can, um, you can be connected and then also you can solve problems because I think many energy um, is lost when you create, um, uh, when you are in this, um, and this aggressive disputes who's uh, blamed for any, any mistake because sometimes shit happens, you know, and then you have to say, basically we trust each other. So this happened and we don't think about who's to be blamed, but we think about how can we solve it and how will this problem not, not happen again? So trust for me is key. I mean, this is in my personal life, this is key, but also in my business life, this is key. And certainly what you have to say is because when I, in this big organization, you know, uh, with many, many people, I felt so good after a certain time that I trusted. And certainly there are also people when I say, oh, dude, you didn't gain my trust, you know, and then you have to separate, you have to get people, let, let people go and say, this doesn't work. Because if you have the feeling that you can trust anyone and you're betrayed or you you know, you feel that someone is not honest and it's not going this way with you, then you have to say, okay, we have to separate. There's no other way. So trust is key, creating a safe space of uh, learning, of failing. And, and that is all in this one vision of we make it all together. No one left behind, no woman left behind, no man left behind. I think that is a very strong picture and certainly one that gives people the power to flourish. And certainly some of them will feel, I don't belong to the chip anymore because I was used in a different way. And, and, and as you put it, then you let them go, you know? 
and not throwing them out, but you let them go and maybe even support them on their journey. So what is your journey for the next couple of months? <laughs> um, well, we have now our ship pretty stable, which is, uh, which is good. So um, the Berenson ship is now moving in this, <laughs> in this direction. And um, so I think it's important really to follow your strategy and uh, to go 100% for it. And uh, we still will launch some new digital products like newsletter marketing and Zaya in, uh, in the next month. And uh, so we want to hire more people now because I think we're ready now and we, our assortment is great. Our people are in a good mood, and now it's also time to enlarge our organization and to get, oh, uh, to get cool, other uh, salesperson. <laughs> so we we in a we in a growth attitude and mindset, and I think we will uh, fulfill this next year. And I'm very much looking forward to that. Awesome, a real, very authentic and profound personal story and corporate story, in finishing with the story of uh, expansion in those times of the pandemic, you are hiring. So I will see LinkedIn, we are hiring now in the future, <laughs> is a phenomenal story. And I'm sure there's a lot to learn. So maybe Astrid, we will have another podcast, maybe in half a year or a year, and to find out the next steps about the journey and what we can potentially learn from them and from your lessons learned on this way we call human is the next big thing so i really appreciated having you on the show and it's Thank all about me. leadership espresso what else inspiration <laughs> thanks for having me stefan bye-bye see you in six months yeah <laughs>